Uh, traditional uh, Western Abenaki greeting song, um, which I like to do whenever I uh, come together with people. It's kind of a strange thing coming to together with people through through the computer here, but we're still coming together. Um, and that song is to we normally sing those types of songs these greeting songs, when we have gatherings of people um, and to greet them. So, Kwe, Kuli Payon, Ondaka Na, Anomaki, which is hello and welcome to the Abenaki homeland. Um, I'm here down in uh, the Hilltop School in uh, outside of Brattleboro and talk a little bit about some history and some stories um, and things like that. So there are five tribes in Vermont right now. Um, they all have their own chiefs, their own uh, council members, and they each have their own constitutions. So we are separate, but we work in an alliance together. Um, four of those tribes, uh, the Elmu, which I'm the chief of down here in southern Vermont, uh, you go up the Connecticut River, you have the Tawasuxeta Meadows. Um, further north, up in the Northeast Kingdom, you got the Nohegans. Um, and over towards the northwest side, you have the Masisque tribe or nation. Um, there is a fifth tribe. Those four tribes I just named are all state recognized by the state of Vermont. There is a fifth tribe in Thedford, um, that is also a Kawasak tribe, but they don't have state recognition. So I just wanna let people know, because often everybody just thinks about the four tribes in Vermont. Um, there are at least three tribes in New Hampshire, and there are two in Quebec. Um, one is called Odanak, and the other one is in Betancourt, Quebec, right? And those are provincially recognized, but there are technically Canadian, um, Canadian Abenaki tribes. So the story that I'm gonna tell today um, is about the area here where we are. Um, it's connected to the Juanito is, is the word that we use, um, which means the long river. Uh, you guys would know it as the Connecticut River. And this is a story about how things came to be. It's also kind of an interesting story because it's where modern science and um, geology come together with Abenaki, or as we call Wabanaki, which means people of the dawn, uh, traditions. The, um, the story is, is extremely old because this goes back some maybe 11, 12,000 years ago when these things geologically would have taken place. But the Abenaki, Wabanaki people have a story about this happening in their traditional way of thinking of how these things happen. Um, there was once about 14,000 years ago, there was a lake that was formed after the last glacier that came through and it was known as uh, Lake Hitchcock. 
and Lake, Hitch Lake Hitchcock went all the way from about, you know, probably about middle Connecticut, all the way up to northern Vermont and New Hampshire. Um, it was not an extremely wide lake, but it was an extremely long lake. And the reason for this was the glacier had left deposits of stone and sand, which caused a natural dam. And the area of this valley filled up, which we know as the Connecticut River Valley. All right. So um, as time went on, eventually that dam broke and that lake drained. But why is this important here in, in the Brattleboro, Vermont area, southern Vermont and stuff? Um, because maybe not here on top of the hilltop where the school is, would not have been covered with water, but most of the town of Brattleboro um, and the surrounding areas for miles on either side of the Connecticut River today would have been underwater. Um, we know that some 20 miles inland going into New Hampshire, out to Keene, that lake went that far into New Hampshire. Um, so eventually that dam broke and the water drained. But this is the traditional story that was told by the Katumtuk people who are related to the Abenaki people and um, many of their ancestors or moved in with the Abenaki um, as our world changed after European contact. And we were kind of pushed all together either up north along the Canadian and, and Vermont, New Hampshire border, or out into New York, and then eventually moving up into Vermont and, and Canada again. So our tribes originally started down here, in uh, south of here in northern Massachusetts, and ran all the way through Vermont, New Hampshire, southern Maine, uh, and a little bit of eastern New York. So this is the story that I know about Lake Hitchcock, or what we call the, the Great Beaver Lake or Pond. So long, long, long time ago, um, after the ices went back to the north and things melted, water started coming down. And eventually, this great big monster beaver um, had come down from the north. It was huge. It was the size of a small mountain. and it, um, it came down and it got to a certain point in the Connecticut River Valley area and it started to build a great dam, right? And as it built this dam, the water started to rise. And as the water rose, it started to fill the land. And of course, this beaver being the size of a small mountain, he needed a lot of food. Now, beavers don't eat meat and fish, but they do eat the bark of trees and the green things that are on the trees. So this beaver started to go around and it chopped down all the trees with its teeth and it would drag them back to where its dam was in its den and the water kept getting deeper and deeper. And the people that were living here, they had to move. They had to get away from the shoreline and constantly were moving further and further away into the woods. And the same thing was happening with the animals. Um, not really a big problem, but the, pr the thing was is that this beaver was very jealous and very protective of its lake that it had made, basically. This long lake that went all the way from Connecticut all the way up into the northern parts of Vermont and New Hampshire. And so anybody who would come to the lake and try to drink from the water or fish or, or go out in it on the boat, they would be attacked by this beaver. This beaver would go up and down the shoreline, swimming all the time, patrolling the sides. And then it was at the same time, it was going out and cutting down all these trees and bringing them back to eat them and to constantly repair its dam. And the dam just got higher and higher. So the water just kept going higher and higher. Animals would come down to try and drink the water. Even the deer, if the deer came down, the beaver would go after them and would try to smack them with its tail and it would kill them. So all of the animals, the people, and even the forest, the trees, 
which were getting thinner and thinner for miles and miles around this lake, were, were crying out um, to ask Habomach. Now, Habomach, I believe in today, we use the word for an Abenaki, for the one who made everything. We use the word Tavoda. And I believe that Habomach is just a different dialect of Tavoldak that we use today. So they were praying and asking Tavoldak or Habomach to come and save them from, from the great evil. Um, and so, so many humans at the time and so many of the animals and even the trees and the plants were crying out for, for Habomach or Tavoldak to come and help them that he heard their cries and he came to the earth because he had been here he had created things and he left and he would come back at times and he came back but he came back as a person in the size and the shape of a person because he's the creator he can do whatever he wants and so that he didn't scare the people and the animals he came back in that shape and that size and he spoke to the people and he spoke with the animals, he even spoke with the trees. And they were all of the same consensus that the, the giant beaver was, would not share the water with anybody, would not let them share in the fish, uh, would not let them drink from the water, swim in the water. And he was just destroying the forest further and further away every time he would go out into, you know, to look for food and bring it back. And so, Habamach decided that he would try to speak with the beaver. And he went to the dam, and he got on top of the dam. This dam was huge. It was miles across the valleys. So it was stopping up all the water, and the fish couldn't come up the water anymore from the ocean. The shad and the salmon and the fish that were stuck behind the dam couldn't go back to lay their eggs in the ocean like they do. And so he was just messing everything up. Everything that was good, he was basically tearing it apart and destroying it. So Tobledock got up on top of the dam, and like I said, it was miles across, and who knows, hundreds of feet high at this point. And so he got up there, and he yelled out for the great beaver. He, he told the great beaver to come to him, and he wanted to speak with the great beaver. Well, it took a while because the great beaver wasn't necessarily right there at the dam at the time. But eventually, the beaver showed up, and his head popped up out of the water. And he looked at Habelmach, and he said, what do you want, human? And Habelmach looked at him, and he says, how do you know I'm a human? And the beaver looked at him, and he said, because you look like the rest of the humans. And Habeldach said, hmm, he says, we shouldn't always go by the way things look, because maybe I'm something greater. And the great beaver laughed at him, and he says, well, and who are you, human? And Habamak looked, and he says, I'm the one who created everything around you. He said, and you are destroying my creation and making all the animals and the people and the different plant peoples sad because you're going out and killing them and hurting them and not letting them use the water. And the great beaver looked and he laughed and he said, this is my water. He says, I made this pond. He says, this is my pond. And he says, the trees, I will kill as many trees as I want and eat them and use them to repair my dam. And I will kill the humans who come here to trespass on my, my pond. And the same thing he said about the animals. And Pablo Doc, Pablo Mock looked and said, Mm, he said, that's not good. He says, I'm going to have to stop you from doing that. And the great beaver looked at him and laughed and quickly spun around and tried to take his great tail and smack it down upon Hobblemock. And Hobblemock jumped out of his way because he could move very, very quickly like the wind. And wherever the beaver tried to hit him, he would just move back and forth across that dam. So eventually, Hobblemock decided that he had enough of this, and he ran to the east to where the forest started again. Because remember, the 
beaver had been eating all the trees for miles and miles around this lake. So he had to travel some distance, but again, he could travel like the wind. And so he went to the east into what we would uh, call New Hampshire today. And he asked, he went to the biggest trees that were still standing, and he said to the trees, he says, among you, who will give themselves to me? He says, I am Habomah. I'm the creator, the one who made all things. He says, I need one of you. He says, I need a war club, a boilum, a head cracker. He says, because I want to put an end to this great monster beaver that is destroying everything. And there was a great oak tree. It was many arms around. And it was so big, you know, it would take several people to put their arms to get around this tree. And it was maybe a couple hundred feet tall. And the tree spoke up and said, I will give myself to you, Habama. He says, if it puts an end to the monster beaver that kills everything around it. And so the tree gave himself to Habama, gave his life to Habama to save the rest of the trees, save the rest of the animals and the humans from the monster beaver. And so Habamak went back. He fashioned out of that tree when he ripped it up out of the ground. Well, one of the things that Habamak can do is he can grow. He can make himself any size. He could be as big as the biggest mountain or as small as the smallest grain of sand. And in this case, before he ripped up the tree, he grew and grew and grew till he was a big mountain. He was as tall as a big mountain. And he ripped up the tree and he fashioned from the ends of the roots and he sharpened them on the stone and he made a war club, a boilum, a head cracker. And he went back to the big dam. <clears throat> and the beaver now seen him because he could hear him as he was walking. He was every time step he took, it sounded like thunder. And the people, everybody was far, far away in the woods, but they could see things that were going on. And so Habomok went to the dam and he jumped over the dam into the water. And the beaver realized that he had bitten off too much. This person that he didn't respect was somebody very, very strong and very powerful and much more powerful than he. And so the beaver swung his tail a couple of times, tried to hit him with it, but Habelmach would just jump from side to side and he couldn't get him. And so Habelmach took the club and swung it at him. And the beaver realized that Habelmach was gonna kill him. And so the beaver started to swim north away from the dam <clears throat> and Habelmach chased him. Eventually, Habelmach caught up with him and there was a fight that went on and the beaver tried to smash him with his tail, which is what they do. They, they will often try to hit things with their tail and he tried to bite him with his teeth and Habelmach swung the war club and eventually Habelmach hit the beaver in the head and killed the beaver. And the great beaver sunk down into the bottom of that lake. Well, as time went on, the dam started to break apart and the water started to flow out. And eventually, the Kwanituk stopped being a lake and became a river again. It was something that flowed again. And the dam eventually broke away and the fish were able to come back. Well, Habomak went back to the spirit world where he came from. And the great beaver that sunk to the bottom of the lake as the water went down, down, a mountain started to emerge, a small mountain. And it was in the shape of a beaver. And this is still here today. If you go down to Sugarloaf Mountain, down in um, Massachusetts, you will see where the beaver still is. And so the belief is, is that that stone mountain that is in the shape of the beaver is the great monster beaver that Habermach had killed. And it had basically gotten covered with stone and become stone itself. And so it's still here today. So that's the nice story of Ho. Um, again, the story talks about many things. It talks about a tradition, a native tradition of native people being here long enough ago that they may have seen 
the natural dam that was here. <clears throat> and they explained it in a way that they understood things. And that's how the story came to be. Um, it also is interesting that at one time, say 11, 12,000 years ago, there were giant beaver. Of course, not as big as uh, a small mountain, but they were probably a couple, six, seven hundred pounds, and they were making large dams. So again, there's this ancient memory of the indigenous people of this valley remembering these things, and these are how these stories come together and become traditions. But it's also a good story be about not being greedy and don't destroy everything around you because um, everybody has to live together. All the things have to, you know, all the animals, all the people have to live together. And, uh, you know, if one thing is stronger than the other and it takes over and it takes away all the trees and the water, it's not a good thing. So the story also has a moral to it of no be greedy. Um, share what you have, especially, you know, the environment around you. Oh, ho. So I'm going to sing a song. i got a few minutes here um, to go. And I'll sing another song to you. <coughs> This is a, a traveling song that we often use when we're basically, you know, going someplace or, or, or ending something. to go here. We'll do another song or two. Oh! 
which means goodbye.